Hi everyone. This video is about our next type of biological molecule, the carbohydrates. What is a carbohydrate? Well, we've all heard of carbs and we know that they occur in foods like pasta and bread and other baked goods. But since we're in a science class, we want to learn about carbohydrates from a more biological and chemical standpoint. So what is the carbohydrate as a molecule? Well, Carbohydrates are relatively simple molecules that generally contain only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. In terms of their function, it's all about energy. Carbohydrate molecules function as energy sources and energy storage for living cells and living organisms. And they also follow that monomer-polymer pattern like we've seen before. So just like amino acid monomers can be joined to form protein polymers, putting together lots of molecules to form a chain like that, carbohydrate monomers can be put together to form carbohydrate polymers. So we're gonna start by learning about the monomers of carbohydrates, which are molecules called monosaccharides. And this word literally means one sugar. So these are simple sugars, and the classic example of this is a molecule called glucose. You're going to hear a lot about glucose in biology this year, and we'll come back to it in a moment. The function of monosaccharides is an immediate energy source. Cells can take in monosaccharides, or sugars, just as they are without needing to break them down further and be able to use them as instant energy. In terms of their structure, Monosaccharides all have the same general type of structure that consists of a carbon skeleton, multiple hydroxyl groups, and one carboxyl group. So here's an example. So we've got a three carbon skeleton with two hydroxyl groups and a carboxyl group up there. And if you count all of the atoms in here, in here, you'll see that this molecule has the formula C3H6O3. Here's another example. So a carbon skeleton, couple of hydroxyl groups, and a carboxyl group. If you count up the atoms in this molecule, you'll see that it also has the formula C3H6O3. So it has the same formula, but a different structure, so that makes these two molecules isomers. And one last example here, again you can see a longer carbon skeleton now, a few hydroxyl groups, and a carboxyl group up there. And if you count up all the atoms, you'll see that this molecule has a formula of C5H10O5. So if you look at the different formulas for these molecules here, you might see that there's a pattern. Every monosaccharide has a formula that's a multiple of CH2O. So for however many carbons you have, there's twice as many hydrogens and the same number of oxygens as carbons. So that's important to know. In terms of their names, monosaccharide names always end with the prefix os. So we'll come back to that glucose molecule here. If you count up all of the atoms in there, well, it's got six carbons. So can you predict what its formula would be? It's C6H12O6. Here's another molecule. And you can see that it also has six carbons. And so it would have the formula C6H12O6. But the structure is slightly different. The carboxyl group is down here. So this is an isomer. It's not the same molecule. So it's not glucose. This one is fructose. And one more, here's a molecule that's just a little bit different from glucose. You can see down here, this hydroxyl group is on the opposite side. But this also has the formula C6H12O6, but again, a slightly different structure. So it's not the same molecule. It needs a different name. This one is galactose. So we do have different names for the different isomers in the monosaccharides. And I chose these three because these are the ones that you need to know, glucose, fructose, and galactose. And you cannot tell the formula from the name, so you're going to need to memorize the names and the formulas. As I mentioned before, this glucose molecule is pretty important in biology, so let's take a closer look at it. So here it is again. And glucose is really important because this is the sugar that cells take up most efficiently. And a lot of the food that we eat gets broken down into glucose, and so that's what we absorb from our digestive system into our bloodstream to go out and feed all of our cells. So when you hear the term blood sugar, we're actually referring to glucose. This here is one form that glucose can take, but it generally only does this when it's in a totally dry environment. And you know that there's a lot of water in our bodies, in our cells. So when it's in a wet environment, glucose actually folds up into this ring structure. So this is what glucose would look like inside our bodies. Now, if you look at this molecule, you might wonder where all the carbons are. And they're there, they're just not drawn in 
every angle or every corner of this molecule is actually a carbon. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and the sixth carbon is up here. And this corner of the molecule here is actually an oxygen. So it's a slightly unexpected shape. But this molecule is a little bit complicated. If we asked you to memorize the structure of glucose, this one's a bit much. So instead, we're going to ask you to memorize this simple or abbreviated version of glucose here, a simple six-sided shape where oxygen is one of the corners here, and the sixth carbon is represented by this little stick here, so sticking up the way this one is here. So this is the form of glucose that you're going to need to identify and be able to draw. So that's everything you need to know about monosaccharides, but what about larger carbohydrates? Well, as I mentioned before, carbohydrates do follow that classic monomer-polymer pattern, so we can put together monosaccharides to form larger molecules. And we're going to do that using a process you've seen before. If we want to put monomers together to form polymers, we're going to use that dehydration or condensation reaction. So if we put together two monosaccharides, we're going to get a disaccharide with that prefix meaning two. For example, if we put together glucose and fructose monosaccharides, then we'll get the disaccharide sucrose or table sugar. So when you go to the supermarket and buy sugar, what you're actually getting is sucrose. So here we have glucose and fructose, and in an enzyme-catalyzed reaction, this hydroxyl group and this hydrogen will be removed and combined to form a water molecule, and then they'll be brought together with this new bond here, as well as a water molecule being produced. So this new bond here is a covalent bond known as a glycosidic linkage, which is specific to carbohydrates. It also can be taken apart using the hydrolysis process that you're familiar with from class. There are other examples of disaccharides also. If we put together two glucoses, we'll get a molecule called maltose. And if we put together glucose and galactose, we'll get a molecule called lactose, which you've probably heard of because that is the sugar that's in milk. These three disaccharides are the ones you're going to need to know. So you'll need to know their names and which monosaccharides are combined to form them. But we'll see these again in class, so you'll have another chance to get more familiar with them. So this is what happens if you put together two monosaccharides, but what if we put together three or four or lots more? If we put together many monosaccharides, we'll get a molecule known as a polysaccharide, with poly meaning many. So these are the polymers of carbohydrates. So if we take many glucose molecules, several monosaccharides, they can be combined using that same dehydration or um, excuse me, condensation reaction, taking off a water molecule and forming a long chain of sugar molecules with lots of glycosidic linkages between them. So this molecule down here now would be considered a polysaccharide. An important thing to know is that there are different types of glycosidic linkages, and there are two specific ones that you're going to need to know. The first one is an alpha glycosidic linkage. So in this diagram, we've got a short chain of monosaccharides all joined together with glycosidic linkages. And if you take a close look at the molecules, you'll see that they're all kind of facing the same way. The sixth carbon is sticking up off each one. And if you look at the glycosidic linkages, they're all kind of facing downwards, the way that they're drawn, they're all facing the same way. What you can't really tell from this diagram is that there's a little bit of an angle to each bond. So if we put together lots and lots and lots of these, the molecule's gonna start to bend, kinda like that. And so if we put together hundreds or thousands, they'll actually coil up in a molecule that looks like this. So alpha glycosidic linkages will result in a polysaccharide that has a helical shape. It's a helix or a coil. And humans are capable of hydrolyzing or digesting polysaccharides that have these because our digestive systems produce an enzyme that can perform hydrolysis on this specific type of bond. The other type of glycosidic linkage you need to know is called beta. If we take a look at this short chain of sugars here, you can see it's a little bit different from the diagram above. If we look at that sixth carbon, it's sticking up on some and sticking down on the others, so it's not really consistent here. And if you look at the glycosidic linkages themselves, they're also kind of facing opposite directions. That means that if we put together lots and lots of these in a chain, the bond angle actually cancels out. And so we end up with a polysaccharide that's more of a straight line rather than coiling up. So a polysaccharide with beta glycosidic linkages is actually going to have a straight chain shape. 
But humans actually cannot hydrolyze polysaccharides that have beta glycosidic linkages because our digestive systems do not produce an enzyme that can perform hydrolysis on that particular type of bond. There are several different types of polysaccharides, and you're going to need to know three of them for this class. They are starch, which looks kind of like this, glycogen, which has this general structure, and cellulose, which has this kind of shape. Now we're not going to talk about the details of these in the video, we're going to wait until class to go over these. But what you're going to need to know about each one of these polysaccharides is who makes it, which types of organisms produce it, what they make it for, or what the function is, what the general structure of the molecule is, and whether or not humans can hydrolyze or digest it. And you might be able to kind of guess the answer to that last one based on the diagrams above. So to review what we've seen in this video, Monosaccharides are the monomers of carbohydrates. Their formula is always a multiple of CH2N, and their names end with the suffix os. The most important one is glucose, with the formula C6H12O6, and it looks like this. But again, you don't need to know that structure. You need to be able to draw this one. Monosaccharides can be joined using dehydration or condensation reactions, and that creates glycosidic linkages. If we put together two monosaccharides, it form a disaccharide, such as sucrose, which looks like this, with that glycosidic linkage between them. And if we put together many monosaccharides, we'll get a polysaccharide, which may look something like this. And the shape of the polysaccharide will depend on whether it has alpha or beta glycosidic linkages. And we're going to learn more about those different kinds of polysaccharides in class. So that's everything you need to know about carbohydrates for now, and I will see you in class.